similar message repeated in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 9. That thou shalt have none other God besides me. Thou shalt make no graven image of anything, of any likeness of things up in the heaven above, in the earth beneath, and in the water beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, thy God, thy Lord, is a jealous God. That means making images of Almighty God, doing idol worship, is strictly prohibited in the Bible. And I start my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 72, which says, لَقَدْ قَفْرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرِيمًا That they are doing kufr, they are blaspheming. Those who say that Jesus, peace be upon him, the son of Mary, he is Allah. They are blaspheming those who say that Jesus, son of Mary, claimed divinity, said he is Allah. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ But said Christ, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, A Abdullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Inna huma yushrik billah. Anyone who associates partners with Allah, Fakad haram Allah ala al-jannah, Allah will make jannah haram for him. Paradise will be forbidden for him. Wama wa hunnar, wama li zalim in minansar. And fire shall be his dwelling place, and he shall have no helpers in the hereafter. Jesus, peace be upon him, himself said, that in no mushrik billah, anyone who associates partners with Almighty God, fakad haram Allah ala al-jannah, paradise will be forbidden for him, heaven will be forbidden for him, wama wa hunnar, wama li zalim in minansar, and fire shall be his dwelling place, and in the year after he'll have no helpers. But there are certain Christians who say that Jesus, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. He said that he's Almighty God. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is no unequivocal statement, not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus, peace be upon him, himself says that he's God or where he says, worship me. I would like to repeat that if you read the Bible, there is no unequivocal statement, not a single in the complete Bible where Jesus, peace be upon him, himself says that he's God or where he says, worship me. If any Christian can show me any verse anywhere from the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that he's God or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity immediately. I am not speaking on behalf of the other Muslims. Since I am a student of comparative religion, I have read the Bible. I am ready to put my head on the guillotine. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus, peace be upon him, himself said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, Jesus, peace be upon him, says, my father is greater than I. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I with the Spirit of God cast out devils. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I cast out devil with the finger of God. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my father. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. He never claimed divinity. As the glorious Quran says, that anyone who associates partners with Allah, Jesus peace be upon him said, anyone who associates partners with Allah, paradise will be forbidden for him. And, the glorious Quran says, in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse number 110, Qulidullah awidur rahman, ayakmatadu, falol asmal husna. Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. You can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name, but it should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. And there are no less than 99 attributes given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran. Like Rahman, Rahim, Al Hakim, most merciful, most gracious, most wise. No less than 99 different attributes are given in the glorious Quran. And this message is further repeated in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 180, Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 8, and Surah Al Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 24, that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the most beautiful name. But why do we Muslims 
we prefer calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the Arabic name Allah instead of the English word God. The reason is that Allah is a pure word. The English word God, you can play mischief with that word God. If you add a S to God, it becomes God's plural of God. There's nothing like plural Allah in Islam. Qul huwallahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. If you add D-E-S-S to God, it becomes goddess, a female god. There is nothing like male Allah or female Allah in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got no gender. If you add a father to God, it becomes Godfather. He's my Godfather. He's my guardian. There's nothing like Allah father or Allah Abba in Islam. Allah is a unique word. If you add a mother to God, it becomes Godmother. There's nothing like Allah mother or Allah Amin in Islam. If you prefix a tin before God, it becomes tin God, meaning a fake God. There's nothing like tin Allah in Islam. That's the reason we Muslims, we prefer calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God. But when you're speaking to non-Muslims and people may not understand what is Allah and if you use the English word God, I've got no objection. But the appropriate word for Allah is Allah itself. God is not the appropriate translation. And the same word Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is mentioned in many religious scriptures, including the Bible. And if you know, in the Old Testament, the word used for God is Elohim. Allah is for God. Him is for plural of respect, Elohim. And if you read the Bible commentary by Reverend Scofield, he writes Allah as E-L-A-H or alternatively as A-L-A-H, Allah, Allah. So even Reverend Scofield agrees that only the pronunciation, they pronounce Allah, we pronounce Allah. The pronunciation is different, but it is the same, one and the same. And further, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was put on the cross, according to the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 46, it's also mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 15, verse number 34, that when Jesus, peace be upon him, was put on the cross, he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. It's there in every translation of the Bible, whether you read the English translation or Hindi translation, or Malayalam translation or Kannada translation, this Hebrew phrase, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakhtani is there. And then it is said, so as to say, Oh God, Oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakhtani, Oh God, Oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? I am asking you the Hebrew statement which Jesus, peace be upon him, said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakhtani, does it sound similar to, Oh God, Oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Does it sound similar? Does Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani sound similar to Joha, Joha, why has thou forsaken me? Does Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani sound similar to Jesus, Jesus, peace be upon him, why has thou forsaken me? But if you translate into Arabic, Arabic, it would read Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani. Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani in Hebrew, in Arabic, Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani. Arabic and Hebrew are sister languages and realize it sounds similar. So even Jesus, peace be upon him, when he was put on the cross according to the Bible, he cried out, Allah. Therefore we Muslims, because Allah is a pure word, we prefer calling him by the word Allah instead of the English word God. And that was the same word used by Jesus, peace be upon him. The second pillar is Salah. And in English, people usually translate Salah as prayer. Prayer does not denote the complete meaning of the Arabic word Salah. Because to pray means to ask for help, to beseech. How do you pray in a court of law? You beseech, you ask for help. In our Salah, besides asking for help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are also praising Him and at the same time we receive guidance from Him. Prayer does not denote the complete meaning of Salah. To pray means only to ask for help. In our Salah, besides asking for help, we praise Him and we also receive guidance for Him. 